when the world's biggest shipping line is warning that 2019 is not going to be looking good, we better pay attention. Things aren't looking good in the shipping industry. Even the world's biggest shipping line has caution preparation for a 2019 even worse than 2018. This applies not just to one particular company, but seems that the global economic slowdown is pervasive. It's not one country that's affected, it's everywhere. But the financial media is focused on Wall Street exclusively. Big mistake. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the shipping industry. I think it's important to look at all of these statistics. You don't want to look at just the unemployment numbers. You don't want to focus on just the technical analysis of the 200 day moving average. You're not going to get the full picture. So that's what I try to present to you here. The shipping industry happens to be one of those. It is a telltale sign of things to come. So let's take a look at this article out of Bloomberg. Maersk lost more than a tenth of its value on Thursday after revealing it expects to earn less money in 2019 than analysts had predicted. The world's largest shipping line said that it expects its earning, a measure of operating profit, to be around $4 billion in 2019. They expected it to be higher and of course when this happens, not just with shipping companies, with all different types of companies, the market hates that and the stocks will fall. The shares sank as much as 12%, making it the worst day since 2016. Maersk and its container shipping peers face a real test of demand. We expect trade is in for a significant slowdown in 2019 as we are past the inventory build up phase driven by cargo front loading. So they're saying right now that you can expect this to be an issue throughout 2018. You're not going to be able to see the trade issues being resolved with China and the US and suddenly all of these problems go away. This is two countries, two big countries. Obviously, it's going to make a big difference, but you're not going to erase the issues. I just spoke about in a previous video I did how Australia and China are now at odds. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We see a world economy that is growing less this year than last year. We see a lot of trade tensions, ongoing negotiations between the US and China. There seems to be a positive momentum, but we don't believe that the last of the trade tensions, even if the deal is made because the US always wants to have a discussion with Europe. And you've seen that before, and that has been going back and forth and not in a good way. We also have the issues that are going on with Russia. We see Russia starting to form partners partnerships with China, with Venezuela, with other nations out there that the US doesn't want to have anything to do with. There's a lot going on here. And then when we see the oil price creeping up, which affects our input costs, that's a big factor when you're looking at guidance. They're going to have demand to not grow as much as they would hope. And you always see this taking place, not just in this industry, but in others as well. Take a look at their stock and how it has been beaten down throughout this period of time, slowly but surely sinking from a high point in 2017 down further and further. This is the Baltic Dry Index. If you want to know specifically about this index, what it is, I just recorded a video, so you definitely want to check that out. I will link to it at the very end of this video, so stay around for that. But basically what we're looking at here is potentially one of the most important indicators in the shipping industry and it has fallen. If you look at what happened during the fourth quarter of 2018, it fell further and further. This has shown us on the chart that it's not just during that period of time. It had been going from a few months prior to that, but it basically just fell off a cliff as soon as all of the stocks started to fall, as soon as the trade tensions picked up and we had a serious pull down during this period. You can see that on the chart here. It has been been rather stagnant for the last little while, but I will track and trace this and give you some updates in future videos. 
The Dow Jones Global Shipping Index is designed to measure the performance of companies in the global shipping industry. So this is a different type of indicator, but it's still focused around the shipping. You're looking at different companies here, which is very different than what we had seen with the Baltic Dry Index, okay? So this gives us a good idea. The more indexes we have, the more of a broad picture we get. And you'll see over the years how this has declined. Why? We should be booming. I mean, look at the stock market. Look at what's happening with all of the quantitative easing, with the stimulus measures. They don't translate into the real economy. Economy. That's what people don't understand. When you print money, it does not benefit Main Street. It doesn't benefit the economy. All it does is prop up certain assets. This time it happened to be real estate and equities. The previous time it was definitely in real estate, particularly in the more risky ones. You could see that it pumped up derivatives. It did so again this time, but you can't really control where you want it to go. That's the failure of quantitative easing. But here, this is just one one perfect example of how the real economy is falling while the stock market has risen. This is the Harpex index and it is another important one. Always keep your eye on this and you'll see over the last several years from before the financial crisis how it has fallen down. My goodness, you could just see it on the chart here. It never recovered in this way and this is just one reason why we need to be paying attention to these. It doesn't give us some good prospects for the future, okay? That's obvious and it's shown right here on this chart. So I just wanted to give you that. And then last but not least, if you want to keep your eyes on all of these different indicators, there are several here. Depends where you want to look and a lot of them I don't think are necessarily ones that you should be keeping an eye on. But if you just want to take a look, there will be a link in the description under the sources tradewindsnews.com and this will give you an idea. But unfortunately it doesn't give a chart form, but this is what we get here. You can scroll through, there's tons in this list and that would be useful to you if you want to look further into it. I'm going to end the video there by just talking about how these shipping indicators give us so much insight into the geopolitical tensions that are there today as you see them unfolding. It's not just the US and China, but you see it all over the world. And I think it is critical to understand what these indexes are as well as the importance of tracking them on a regular basis. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education that was not taught to you in school, these two books have everything that you need. You could take a look in the description below. And if you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the Baltic Dry Index, check out this video. I made it very simple and it will break down everything you need to know about that. So just click on the video and I'll see you there.